Since its launch in 1991, the World Wide Web has helped connect Earth's human population like no other invention in history. And every moment we use it to inform and entertain, shop and sell, educate, teleconference, play games, manage money, conduct research, share ideas, subscribe, create, invent, travel, encourage, strategize, and converse with individuals, organizations, and businesses almost anywhere on the planet. Today, the web connects an estimated 5 billion people. But it isn't the only way living organisms interact on a massive scale. In fact, it's possible the World Wide Web may actually pale in comparison to another global network that's much older, larger, and perhaps even more crucial to the future of life on Earth. So put on some hiking boots and grab a flashlight, because we're about to explore a remarkable display of communication and connection, where digital code and fiber optic cables are replaced by the extraordinary power of mushrooms. Though usually small, stationary, and unobtrusive, Mushrooms are the most visible components in a hidden network with the power to connect every tree in a forest. Biologically, they're classified as fungi and their primary components are slender filaments called hyphae. These densely packed threads create the basic structure of a mushroom stem and cap, but their importance doesn't end here. Below ground level, the hyphae fan out and merge to form mycelium, living, growing colonies of fungal strands. These concentrated filaments are so dense and tightly compacted that 200 miles of mycelium fibers can be covered by a single footstep. Each hyphae strand is loaded with enzymes, designed to break down, absorb, and recycle the chemical nutrients stored in soil and dead wood. Then they deliver their precious cargo to living organisms throughout the forest. Now, let's consider what's happening here on a macro scale. There are an estimated three trillion trees on our planet and each is anchored and sustained by a system of roots. Right above them, clusters of mushrooms instantly pop into view as their mycelium fibers branch out in every direction. And when these strands attach to the roots, they create a sprawling array of pipelines known as mycorrhizal networks. The stage is now set for a dazzling performance. When sunlight hits the leaves, it triggers photosynthesis, a chemical process that generates not only the oxygen we breathe, but also the sugar molecules the tree must manufacture and consume. These carbohydrates are distributed throughout the tree's limbs and trunk, before reaching the roots and a subterranean factory that's skillfully engineered and a wonder to behold. Here, just inches below the surface, a web of fungi and wood efficiently perform a series of vital transactions. As mycelium fibers, thinner than the diameter of a human hair, bore into tree roots to siphon off sugar molecules, the fungi's primary source of energy. In return, the fungi supply the tree with water and nutrients, including phosphorus, zinc, calcium, copper, and organic nitrogen. Simply stated, 
The fungi help feed the trees, while the trees nourish the fungi. But there's another level of interaction going on below these limbs, leaves, and trunks. A crucial exchange of chemical resources, not only back and forth between the trees and the fungi, but also between the trees and their neighbors, using fungi as a highway. Researchers have nicknamed this network of biological links the Wood Wide Web. The name's both catchy and appropriate. For many biologists, now believe at least 90% of our planet's vegetation is connected by complex webs of fungi and roots. That means entire forests could be unified through an underground grid that enables individual trees to share resources, transmit warnings, and relay information. Here's a quick glimpse at a few of the documented collaborations that reveal how trees can often work together. The tallest, oldest trees in a forest are known as hubs, or mother trees. That's because evidence now indicates they're equipped to actually nurture their seedlings. In controlled experiments, using radioisotopes to trace the connections, it appears that hub trees send their offspring shipments of carbohydrates by pumping excess sugar through the mycorrhizal network. For a seedling that struggles to find adequate sunlight in a heavily shaded forest, a steady flow of essential nutrients dramatically improves the young tree's chances of survival. How effective are these family ties? In a small 30 by 30 meter parcel of Canadian forest, DNA analysis and fungal mapping revealed that one Douglas fir hub was linked to at least 47 of its progenies by root and mycelium connections. Researchers have also discovered that dying trees release large quantities of their stored nutrients into the soil for future access by their healthy neighbors. While different species like paper birch and Douglas fir also exchange nutrients based on their specific seasonal needs, birches deliver sugars to shaded firs in the summer. And in the fall, the firs return the favor by sending nutrients to the leafless birches. In another study, an adult pine that was attacked by insects sent chemical warning signals to its neighbors through its roots and fungi. In response, the surrounding trees released defensive enzymes to protect themselves from invasion. Science is only beginning to understand the inner workings and importance of mushrooms, mycorrhizal networks, and the wood wide web. But recent discoveries are fascinating and important. Since Darwin, biologists have generally viewed trees as disconnected loners, constantly competing for water, nutrients, and sunlight. In an evolutionary battle, where only the strongest organisms survive. Today, however, a rapidly growing body of evidence challenges that theory by revealing vast ecosystems of vegetation and fungi, each thriving together in cooperative, mutually beneficial relationships. While part of a global network of roots and mycelium fibers that if laid end to end, would span nearly half the width of the Milky Way galaxy. It is a magnificent creation that speaks clearly of design, purpose, and a transcendent mind who made the Earth a living planet, perhaps unique from any other 
in the universe.